Bola Tinubu has no capacity to run Nigeria. PDP chieftain Bode George insists, even as he vows to relocate, depending the outcome of the presidential election petitions tribunal before leaving the country. Tonight on Plus Politics, we analyze the prospects and expectations of the president elect, even as he marks his 71st birthday amidst call for a re election. This is Plus Politics. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bode George, a former deputy national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has hinted on the possibility of his relocation into any country of his choice following the victory of Bola Tinubu because, according to him, Tinubu has no capacity to run Nigeria. Bode George has said he will not attend the inauguration and swearing in ceremony of Bola Tinubu, the president-elect. As the president-elect prepares to take over the mantle of leadership at 71, the president-elect affirms that his political pedigree from the 90s, active role in party politics, being elected senator and later governor of Lagos State, and diligent involvement in the structure of leadership at the executive and legislative levels for many years will serve as assets for good and effective governance. The question is, is this enough? We are being joined tonight to discuss this. Uh, by Opunabo Inkotaria, Public Affairs Analyst. Good evening and welcome to the program, Opunabo. Opunabo, good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening, Opunabo. Okay. We also have Alester Wilcox, a Public Affairs Analyst as well. Good evening and welcome to the program. Good evening for having me. It's nice to see Opunabo once again. Opunabo, it's been, it's been a while. Okay. Nice to see you. Alester, how about... Thank you, my brother. You didn't come to Potato. I was there at Christmas. I, I'm still coming for Easter. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's try and meet. Let's try and meet now. Okay. No problem. Thank you very much, Opunabo. Yeah, gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen. There will be time for celebration. I will join the two of you. Even. We'll make a trinity. <laughs> okay. But right now we're talking about uh, what Bode just said. And uh, Bode George might be one person, but it seems to be. A public cry from so many other people whether they are significant or not and it begs the question is the healing process um, even taking place right now because some people feel aggrieved after the elections the presidential election especially even though body judge is talking about capacity and all that but that's not the issue the issue is that so many people feel aggrieved whether it is perceived or real but the healing process, which Nigeria very, very much needs right now, is there much that is being done in this regard so that people can be on the same page, even if they are still fighting for any other cause, but they should be on the same page knowing that this is our Nigeria and there has to be a start somewhere and a finish somewhere to any fight. Let me begin with you, Alesta. What do you think about the healing process after the elections to make Nigeria... Uh, not disintegrate because of grievances. Well, um, thank you very much. Nigeria will never disintegrate because of election. We've had elections, and uh, for the first time in our national life, we are having a seven successive election cycle. I mean, it has never happened before. So we should beat our chest and uh, be grateful that we are Nigerians and that uh, at our own time, Nigeria is witnessing this kind of democratic uh, 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 stride. Uh, in terms of uh, longevity in having unbroken democracy. So we should give ourselves that heavy pat on the back. I salute the country, I salute everybody. Now, um, this is one of the most keenly contested elections in recent times. Keenly contested because of the UPERA that it brought in. And it, for me, it's a very good thing, very, very good that it happened that way, that people are interested, people want to uh, show deep interest in the election, and then so they came out um rightly or wrongly and then everybody just expressed opinion but of course in any context there will only be only be one winner you know and uh, if you see the way the votes are evenly are shared you will say this is a real contest and that is why we should congratulate ourselves and say look nigeria has come of age um talking about the healing process of course no loser losers don't accept defeat 
Maybe apart from the British election that I see that we do that, you need to congratulate the winners and all. Look at what's happening in America. Um, as of today, uh, Donald Trump is still holding strongly. The Republicans are still bitter about the, which has, I mean, I mean, about the victory of Democrats. That's, that is a mature democracy. I mean, look, look at, I mean, they are still bitter. And they've not given the Democrats a chance. So it is not unusual. I am not supporting what is going on. So it's not unusual that we have this. And because, of course, they say time heals every wound. So with time, um, when the new government has settled in, and all the you paid about the court cases are all, uh, are all decided one way or the other, then everybody will go back to normalcy. But I think if anybody is thinking that this election uh, has any comma, I think the person is just trying to uh, trying to be a sore loser or a very bad loser. Uh, maybe you didn't ask me to talk about body George, but if I may say talk about body George, which is the which is your focal point this evening, uh, I think I think um, I would respect the elder statesman. Body George is an elder statesman that deserves everybody respect, you know. And at this point, it is not the person of body George that should be leading this kind of uh, attack on our democracy, on, our, on the present elect. It should be the smaller children, not Bode George. Bode George has paid his dues in this country. Bode George was a, was a, was a senior naval officer. He, he retired as a, as, as, as a, as a brigadier, in the, as a first uh, one star uh, general of the, of, the, of, the, of the Nigerian Navy. Bode George served as governor of those states. So Bode George has served as, uh, as, as an elder statesman. And as such, he should leave it. But the judge was the same person that said if Buhari wins, he will go on exile. He didn't go. He stayed back. Now, if Tinubu wins, going on. So what does he really want? He will now allow people to now start estranging him. He's an elder statesman. Let him remain an elder statesman. His candidate lost. He should accept it. And let's not, let us not start debating about the judge or who he is, his capabilities. Let him not bring himself to that level when little, uh, small boys will now start explain who Bode George is. So I think for me, he should accept the fact that whatever, whoever he supported lost the election, and whoever he didn't support won. And then if he wants to go on exile, he can gently go on exile if he wants to, but not to overheat the policy and be making statements that will not make people to not start uh, asking who is Bode George, let's start explaining Bode George. I wouldn't want to go there, it's, but in it's... case... Um, he wants us to go there. People uh, might go Alistair, there and be interested. Just so we understand, if Unabo is waiting anyway, but just so we understand, uh, so that we don't infer something that you may not have meant when you were talking, uh, it sounded as if uh, being a statement, which Bodeja should be, uh, if there is anything to complain about, as a statement, you cannot complain. You leave the little boys, as you call them, the young boys, to complain about these things. So make us no, understand no, no. why no, Bode no, George saying, cannot complain saying, and speak his mind. Yes. During the election, Bode George expressed his opinions. He, he, he showed his preference. He campaigned as electionary. He campaigned for a candidate. He showed his preference. He was very, very vocal. But after election, there are statements, there are some things that you don't as an elder statesman, that you should national, just uh, let go. Yes, nobody is, defeat doesn't fit anybody. But as an elder statesman, you have been, you have been a general in the, in the Nigerian Navy. So you know that there is always a, 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 a defeat in any assignment. So at that point, you don't start talking about you going on exile, or you don't want to go to an exile. You don't, want to, you don't start talking about all those things. But I mean, for me, there is the meaning of the caliber of body judge. That is just my personal opinion. Okay. Uh, let me go to Ipunabo. Uh, why I didn't um, really focus on uh, Bode George, even though our literature about today is uh, Bode George, we're talking about the words that he used, uh, that he's going to exile himself to any country because, according to him, uh, Tinubu has no capacity to rule Nigeria. Whatever that meant to him is not the issue here. The issue is that, apart from the person of Bode George, we heard before this time how two Nigerians living abroad had to tear their, um, their, their passports uh, as Nigerians. They didn't want to be Nigerians anymore. Whether we know them in Nigeria or not, whether they're significant or not, but this is done in public glare. People who are coming from Nigeria 
burning ties, burn, burning bridges uh, with Nigeria because of what they perceive as an injustice being done in their country. It throws on his, us in a very bad light. So we cannot say so, because someone is insignificant, he can go to hell. So that is why my question that I asked, first of all, is that in light of all this, whether it is perceived or real, we need something that will give us some kind of healing. And the question was, are we doing enough to make sure we arrive at this point where we get the needed healing and forge ahead as a country? Or what else do we need to do for this healing to come fast enough? Well, uh, first of all, let me preliminarily state that in as much as Bode Joe ought to be one respected man, elder statesman in this country, I would never push a new career. I don't think I have any respect for him politically because he has shown and against high level of partisanship, bias. I was shocked when Bode Joe during the G5 and was making all kinds of statements. Like Alex said, this was not the first time he has tried to go on exile. And if today Badejo goes on exile, which I doubt, the country will not come to an end. It will not. That is just an expression of his displeasure. And if Badejo will go on exile now, then it will be quite surprising, considering it's it. Nevertheless, a lot of people we are not happy with the outcome of it. You cannot never, ever in the history, save the Civil War, have the penniless legations of Nigeria been so set. You know, the build up to the election, and you cannot divorce INEC from it. Yes, we've had elections in the past characterized by regions and so on. But this is peculiar. And what makes it peculiar? INEC gave Nigerians the hope that the elections were going to be free, fair, and credible. And people travel from all over the globe especially with the production of the beavers, which the world saw as a prerequisite to matriculating into the University of Transparency, political university of transparency, credibility, fairness, with all the high blood pressure of dissected veterans by INEC, I'm talking of the chairman and Presley Security. So Nigerians, even those in diaspora, felt that this time around the votes of the people will count. Sadly, it wasn't the case. The hopes were dashed. And why a lot of people are angry, it's not just because volatility emerged. No, far from it. In as much as so many Nigerians do, believe that when you consider his baggage, you have a lot of controversy surrounding his education, and nobody, none of his persons, his supporters, his official those have come up to clear the issue. Most times, they employ what you can call second locution. They are prevaricating. If you ask Sudbabu, which school and which school did he attend? Even if you ask my brother, which school and which school. He will even go into when he graduated, his classmates, his teachers, and so on. In this particular instance, he has changed his name. Who was your classmate with tomorrow? Nobody knows. Up to the issue of his parents, up to the issue of the uh, uh, narcotic uh, uh, scandal, where he paid money, which is a conviction, he paid money, the court fined him, and he paid, which he admitted. But what uh, his spokesman, Professor Kiamo's argument, which suffers from equity and poverty of logic, was that 
It was not the volatility, it was his company. This is what I want to How can you distinguish that? He paid. And his name was also on that judgment paper. Having said all this, if today I declare him, consider him fit, no problem. If the court also says, yes, no problem, there's nothing you can do about that. But don't, don't forget, there's a difference between legality and legitimacy. There are places where candidates won, and you can see the air suffused with joy. Now, in the case of Bola Metinibu, you know too well, even when you consider the past previous uh, head of president, you know too well that you could more, you found more of sadness than joy. And I'll tell you why. Not necessarily his president. No. I'll tell you why. First and foremost, what they did to the people in Lagos, that MCO Lugo and so on, what they did to the people in Lagos. Number two, you remember what his wife said. And just before the elections, they asked her, when she said, you cannot come to Lagos, make your money as an Igbo man, and not vote for the APC. They should rather leave. She said she has no regrets. Now, at that point, at least there was an opportunity for her to correct an impression. But she said that she has no regrets. That was shortly before the election. They reminded her of that statement. She said, no regrets. Now, number two, after the election, you could still see the likes of Fanny Kaode, first to Skeyamo and to making incendiary and divisive statements. Paul Ahmed is silent on it. Now we are talking of reconciliation. Paul Ahmed Tinubu is silent on it. As the president-elect, he ought to have called them to order. Enough of the fire and brimstone. Enough of the uh, uh, war of words and so on. You don't need all that. We need healing. No, that is not the case. Now people will say, that was not Balaam Metinibu. But don't forget that the servants on an errand, if caught doing something wrong, is as guilty as the master. That is what they call vicarious liability within the law. We expected Balaam Metinibu, being the president elect, a statesman, to say, enough of the fireworks. The matters are in court, even when provoked. Have you heard a people talk? Carelessly, even when the, the, the people, even when your proposition might keep quiet, the matters are in court. While you surreptitiously try to smoothen out the rats with their grief parties. Yes, whenever you have elections, you must have their grief parties, okay. rightly or wrongly. Okay. It's left for the court to decide. Okay. But we expect the president elect, that's not what we expect the president elect to call his loyalists to order. Okay. Don't go on telling to further fester the already bad situation. Okay, I see that. that. Oh, 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 if you talk oh, about the I get that. process. Ah, I get that. Um, that's the healing that I've, be, I've been asking for. That's one angle of it. Okay, the president-elect should talk. We need to hear that. But there are other things to interrogate here, um, and our time is running. Uh, from the words of Bodejoj, like I said, I don't want us to make it about Bodejoj, but some of the things that have been expressed, some people have expressed them as well. So whether anybody has political standing or not, but they are Nigerians, and if that is what they're expressing, which we've not seen in, in other elections, I don't know if you have seen, I have not seen in other elections. I'm coming to Alester now. Bodejoj said that Tinubu cannot, uh, doesn't have the capacity to rule Nigeria. Maybe one thing that Ipunabo said is that he's being silent and he shouldn't do that as a president-elect. But there are some things that I've noticed, or people have noticed, uh, just after the election won. There is a colloquium that is being held, and that reinvigorates the economy in some ways, that teaches some people in some ways. Like the ninth colloquium, for instance, had um, the keynote speaker had something about Nigerian spirit of enterprise. The attendance in that colloquium was massive. 
and the people that learned lessons and went from there and uh, keep learning lessons from each colloquium are uh, very many. There was summit of uh, automobile assembly, there was for housing assembly, there was Nigeria Spear of Enterprise, there was clothing industry, there was uh, uh, food and cosmetic industry, there was tech assembly and there were a lot of things to learn from, from that colloquium and every other one that has been held before then. But just now, the only year that he's been elected president-elect, he cancelled the colloquium. Instead, he called for prayers. And guess what? He called for prayers to be prayed, especially like in Lagos here. Let me read directly from his aid. In Lagos, the prayers will be offered at the central mosque in each of the five divisions in the state, including the central mosque, Alausa Ikeja. Special prayers will be offered for peace, unity, and progress of Nigeria. In the statement I saw, I saw nothing about Christian. The prayers will be, will be held in mosques across Lagos State. Nothing was said about Christians. Maybe this is uh, a conspiracy theory or something, but for someone who emerged on a platform that was askance, with a platform that was questionable, I don't know whether this should be. And then this morning, just this morning, we saw people, um, uh, transporters protesting that suddenly the fee that they pay to the ones we have termed Agberos has suddenly gone up. We also saw, was it yesterday or, or, or today, where a very popular musician said, nothing can be done to him by the police because they rule this country now. His master is at the helm of affairs. And like Ipun Abbo said, nothing has been said by the president-elect. What does it say about his capacity to quell um, uprisings, to put Nigeria in, uh, in a good footing, whether economically or not, but in, as a united nation, like you started, Alex, Alexa, Nigeria will not disintegrate. So being silent in all this, does it tell you that when the curtains are down, he can administer Nigeria the way he should? I'm so disappointed at your narrative. I have, I have been to your station very often, and I respect your station so well. And that's why that even though I'm on, I am in transit, I still take, but I'm disappointed at your narrative. I think... Put uh, me right. You it's, it's, like whether you're disappointed right. or not, but put me right. I asked yes, a question. I, I, I think, I, I Give think me the I light like right. whether and the statement not, of, uh, is, of Bode mean, George was not, correct or not. My, it's, my, it's, it's my turn to speak. This yes. is not you. This is not what your station stands for. This is what we see from our eyes, and, uh, and I'm disappointed. First and foremost, you are, in, you are influenced about, the, uh, that, about him talking about prayers to be held in mosques, and you didn't see Christ, and you didn't see church, churches. I don't know what you are trying to infer. He said, this is Ramadan. This is the period of Ramadan. And that is why he canceled it, because it was the period of Ramadan. And so, that, so he said, prayers should be held in those mosques. Because this is the period of Ramadan. So making any, any inference. For me, I think this is the problem we have with Arjuna. I'm not supposing you account. I'm not. I'm not it's also, the, pro it's also the, the time of Lent. Take, take note I am of that. Disappointed we are not, we are not comparing I'm, I'm things. But it's also the time no, of Lent. Because you made that statement and I take serious attention to it. Because this is the thing that the press does to escalate our already Friday or unfair meanings that Hitato will not be there. But that's not the issue. I'm not defending about uh, 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 whatever either mosque or, or church or anything. He has been organizing his colloquium on his birthday, and this time around, he said he's canceling it because of the period of Ramadan. And it is his right, it is his right as uh, a Muslim to ask that prayers be made for him in the mosque. Whatever informed that reason, I don't know. But I don't think we should be reading for every minute to it. We are talking about healing. And then expanding what is not expandable. Is not helping us with the healing. Unfortunately, unfortunately, too, my brother Ibn Abu has also dwelt on his uh, on his uh, credentials and all what on. That's not for me. That's not where I'm going. The fact remains that election has been done. One, there must be only one one winner. And even if it was one, this election was won by Tiku, Obi will have complained that it was rigged. Tribu will have complained that it was rigged. If it was won by Obi, the other two will have complained that it was rigged. If it was won by Kwakwanso, the other ones will have so. This is the Nigeria that we are. But let me say this. Anybody, look, when Barack Obama won election in the U.S. in, 19, in 2008, what happened? Some people in 13 states 
move the motion of secession from the from the from the confederation. It was an open thing. Some people from 13 states were trying to quote the constitution that they can succeed because they never liked Obama, a black man, to be president. So if chooses to tear his old passport, unused passport, in the name of being angry, that is that, that person is insignificant. Maybe I've left Nigeria. So why is he carrying your passport? You are abroad. Why not stay in Nigeria? We are not in Nigeria. Are we fools? We are aching the living of Nigeria. I've not left this country. All that I've made in life is in Nigeria. I've not left Nigeria. I only go out of Nigeria for holidays. So all that I've made in Nigeria, all that I've made in my life is in Nigeria. People have made it big in Nigeria. So if you choose to be a refugee abroad, because you are lazy, you cannot act out to live in Nigeria, and you are abroad, and you are stigating your country and telling your passport, that is your responsibility. You are, you are, you are, you are, you are insignificant. Just like uh, 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 that statement, Bodija is talking about living in Nigeria, he's one man. And people have left. And we are all here. As I'm driving now, there are, there are people who are walking on the streets, I cannot say living. Go to the UK, there are people who are walking on the streets. Go to, I've, I've traveled wide in this, in this, in, 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 in this, in this world. Go to, go to, go to uh, even the most prosperous country, uh, talking about Singapore. You see people walking on the streets. So if anybody felt that he was appointed about the election and then he tore his passport, of what value is that to the person? So I mean, I mean to Nigerians. We are over 200 million. And if people, people choose, people change nationality. Every day, people are asking to become Nigerians. People are planning to become Nigerians. So, so people are planning to become British, to become Australians, to become Americans. So it's a free world. But what I'm saying, in essence, is this. In terms of capacity, hmm. there's no, but the judge is not important to talk about capacity. Because now I say, let's not go there. He was governor, he was governor of, of Ondo State. Please, let him name his, what, let him name his legacy in, in Ondo State. And I'm sure a lot of people will name more, 200 legacies in Lagos that he left, even after he left office. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about capacity. So uh, for me, we're talking about a healing process. And it is, and he reached out. Balatinibu reached out after the election. Don't get me wrong, I'm not partisan. I'm not in any party. He reached out to his opponent and said they should join him. And what happened in Lagos? Balatinibu issued a statement. So this is something we are saying here that his, 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 uh, his men are attacking others. What of others are attacking him every day? People are digging out all kinds of things so from, the, from, from the real to the mundane, and they want his men to keep quiet. Look, when truth, we're, 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 we're in an internet age, we're in a social media age, then when things keep running on social media, and we're in a perverse press, uh, press age, that if things keep running and there's no rebuttal, it becomes the truth. So his men also have a right to, re to, 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 I mean, to those rebuttals. Because every day you see things being thrown from nowhere. You see things being thrown from everywhere. You see people say, stating things. And sometimes when this is stated and there is no counter, it becomes the truth. So if these men are responding, okay. then they have a right to respond. Again, he has responded. Don't say he did it. He has responded in several ways. No okay. matter what happened in Lagos, happened. Wrap he it up, wrap it up, Because please. God didn't rule Lagos, and he ruled Lagos for everybody. He mm. didn't discriminate in Lagos. He has commissioners who are non Yorubas that are in Lagos. So he said he's a disabilized man. I'm not I'm not a party member, I'm just saying it, but I'm telling you the man I know, the man that we want okay. to let Let's... the election is come and gone. Let okay. the court decide. All right, let thank, the court thank decide you, Alexa. And then everybody tell us together to build a country. Thank you, Alexa. Um Ipunabo, our time is like we have like two minutes. So I'd like your response uh, as we wrap up on this segment before we go to... Yes, uh, yes Alexa was very wrong. Because what I said, I said preliminarily, a lot of people were agree. Nevertheless, the elections have been conducted and the matter is in court. Mm. That's what I said. So and, and I have no regrets. because And I said here again that whenever you have an election, of course, a lot of persons will be agreed. So... And I said, I stated why a lot of them we are also agreed, and which is also in all the national and international uh, journals and papers. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Then again, on the issue of the Koloko, let us face facts. Bola Metilibu this year did not hold any because it was also like a political gathering. And he has so far gotten what he wants. So he just said that because if you say it is Ramadan, the other year, you are there, Ramadan, and then. We also had Ramadan and then, 
But it is his choice. It is within his powers to so do whatever he wants to do. And it is also within the right of every... The same meaning is not in the message, but in the message user. If you say it, in, that's why they say you must choose the right word from the word basket. If you say it, in, it is left to plural interpretation. So before you do anything, you must make sure, you must consider the interpretations of any other person. You cannot say it in and say, no, actually, this was what I meant. You have to get quite explicitly whatever you say or whatever you do. Because it's subject to interpretation. If you get up, and that's why you also have this uh, uh, common field of experience. If I'm your friend, and I, and I say to even Alester, and I say to him, Alester, you're a madman, get away from here. He might understand what I mean. But if I say that to somebody that's not a friend, he will misinterpret it and my little litigations. So when you're saying a thing or doing a thing, you must do it in such a way that it will be lucy to a majority of people. So it's not a question of it, it, this or that. And once you do that, it is subject to plural interpretation. If it is slanted interpretation, moving into it, so be it. That's why it is your duty to ensure that you are as transparent and clear as you can in life. That is one aspect of it. Then the, the second one is the issue. Like I said here, I said, listen, what we expect Brother Ahmed Tinubu to do, I just mentioned some name. He said other people are not attacking. I can tell you right now that you, if I tell you to mention those that have been casting as patrons on Brother Ahmed Tinubu, like I, he said, he's not in any political party. I'm also not in any political party. I told you that. I said, I will vote across party lines. And that was exactly what I did. Because it has to do with my perception of you and your antecedent. Now, if I tell you that, for example, you have the likes of Atiku Abubakar, you have the likes of Labour Party. Atiku Abubakar instructed his men never to attack anybody. Even when Jason Mitte was attacking him, he kept mute. Even now, he said to them, no, we'll go to court. We're already in court. Labour Party, everybody knows that. He has been saying that from day one. And most times when people come on air, they analyze the issue. They don't learn uh, uh, inventives on this other person. Just like what Fanny Kaida mentioned to Fanny Kaida and first to Skyamo. They don't, uh, do, all like this, uh, the likes of uh, Polars of Bolan, as well as of uh, Kiku and the Labour Party, I'm talking of the major political parties right now. Even Kwaku and so, they come on air and analyze the situation. Most times they indict INEC. They are not as abusive and abrasive as Fanny Kaida and first to Skyamo. And if you we understand that so a man like Francis Kiamo is trying to ingratiate himself so that he will be retained in the Federal Executive Council. No doubt about that. Because, because even if some of the things he's doing are completely legal, you're in office and you're, you're, you're going to court in your own capacity. How can you, how can you distinguish that? How do you distinguish that? But just because he wants to ingratiate himself with uh, Bolana so that he's retained in the Federal Executive Council. What we are saying, now you're the president-elect. In actual fact, as the president-elect, you are no longer at the same level with the likes of Peter B and Atiku. So you should, you, should, you should be more dignified. You can come on air to say, nobody should speak on these things anymore. We are going to court. What will be said now that has not been said? The only thing that people are analyzing right now is the, the election. Let's wrap up. Let's people wrap are no up. longer talking of, oh, you are a criminal. You are not a criminal. Because the court will decide it. And remember, I said here in my opening, I said, whatever it is, where well, I declared it. So it's now left for the courts. But people analyzing the irregularities during the election. And okay. you don't, if, if I come on there to say uh, plus TV is bad, I get, and, and you say no, plus TV is not bad, it's quite different from attacking the owner of plus TV. Like I said, I don't like the way you air. Just like Alester said, oh, he's disappointed. No problem, you can attack the station. But you don't go beyond to attack the person. That is the point you are making. And as a president elect, like I said, he's no longer at par with this other one. So he should be the first. Even if they abuse him from now to tomorrow, okay. he should be the first. The let's only let's wrap up, no Bravo. Even if they attack me, leave it until after the court. Of that is the healing process we are talking about. Of Bravo, thank you, thank you. Um, this, well, you know, sometimes when things happen like this, we talk and we talk. But the bottom line is whether we quarrel, whether we fight, we need Nigeria to heal, and we hope that that healing will come fast enough. Whatever the avenues we are going to use, whatever we are going to say, whatever we are going to do, we are hoping Nigeria will emerge stronger. Thank you so much, Opunavo Inkotaria, for coming on the program, and also Alester Wilcox for coming on the program. It's always good to have Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Let me wish the president-elect happy, happy birthday. Yeah. God bless Nigeria, and may God protect our troops. Yeah. From us to don't, don't, mind, I don't mind my brother. My brother. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We've been talking with Openabo in Kotaria, public affairs analyst, and another public affairs analyst, Alester Wilcox. And we've been talking about capacity, we've been talking about healing process, we've been talking about the grievances of Nigerians after the uh, presidential election, especially in Nigeria. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be talking security, according to DSS. Stay with us. <laughs>